<laughs> now, let's move on to lesson two. Let go of the past. The future holds many possibilities. You have the power to think whatever you choose to allow into your head, and you have the power to make it go away. If you don't believe this, answer this one simple question. If you don't control your thoughts, who does? So my dad grew up during the Depression, and that made such an impact on him that he managed his money out of fear. He was terrified of investing and only had his money in banks, and it was spread between nine different companies. So growing up, I didn't know about anything financial other than putting my money I earned into a bank account. One of my grandparents had the same thing, Sherry. They believed that all the good they saw around them could so easily be taken away. One war, one stock market crash. Are these possible? Yes. And these events could occur, but do you want to live your life in fear? A phrase I learned in the military was, plan for the worst, but expect the best. If you apply this to your finances, you may save a little more than you need for retirement, but you really don't want to experience being broke in retirement. And our next point is that uh, you can't have a feeling without first having a thought. When Sherry and I first read this, we had to stop and think about it. Did you digest that sentence? You can't have a feeling without first having a thought. Well, try this. I have a feeling, therefore I have a thought. Hmm, that doesn't work. I have a thought. That causes a feeling. Now that works. The media loves this, which is why they plant the thoughts in your head to make, to make you afraid. Because they know that your brain is attracted to scary stuff. Your brain has a thing called the amygdala, which is constantly scanning the horizon, looking for scary stuff. This was great when we were cavemen, but it's not so helpful today, unless you're driving on I-75, that is. The media tells you a scary story, then advertisers pitch buying gold and silver as a solution. Let's scare you to think the world is coming to an end and encourage you to buy coins. Think about this. If the world's coming to an end or Redemption Day is tomorrow, what good are the gold coins? They're only worth what someone is willing to give you in exchange. But the coin sellers don't care about that because they profit on the buy and the sell, which is why they are running, running so many ads. Emotions have no place in personal finance and can really throw a wrench in your decision making. Are you stockpiling food, cash? Ammo. You have to ask yourself, if the you-know-what really hits the fan, what would you really need? Let's start with drinking water, medications, food, and the way to live safely to protect what you own. Hopefully, we never go through that sort of experience. Yeah, hopefully. You know, Sherry, I had a friend tell me that he did not want to collect anything but ammo for those hard times when the world goes into turmoil or the zombie apocalypse happened. He said ammo is a good bartering tool and that a, a lot more effective than throwing gold bars uh, and silver bricks at people to protect themselves. <laughs> That's funny. Emotions are something that we all have an experience. Yes, they drive a lot of the decisions that we make each and every day, and they can drive our spending or saving decisions. Donald Black, a professor of psychiatry, states about two-thirds of compulsive shoppers have a history of anxiety or depression. Two-thirds. So you think things are bad, and you feel depressed or anxious because of that, and you spend money to make yourself feel better. So again, you can't have a feeling without first having a thought. Here's a quote from the Wayne Dyer book. <clears throat> you have grown up in a culture which has taught you that you are not responsible for your feelings, even though the truth is that you always were. You've learned a host of sayings to defend yourself against the fact that you do control your feelings. Here's a brief list of such utterances that you may have used over and over. You make me feel bad. I can't help the way I feel. I just feel angry. Don't ask me to explain it. I've seen emotions lead to financial ruin, mm -hmm. so feelings need to be disconnected from financial decisions. This is why financial experts ask you to research financial decisions and give them time so you can think through them clearly. And it's also a good reason to have a financial advisor that can help you work through major spending decisions. That's right. And, you know, Cher, our next topic is about approval. When approval seeking is a need, the possibility for truth are all but wiped away. Wayne Dyer kicks off this chapter talking about kids, and he says, quote, that they, they do need acceptance from their parents in their formative years, and that approval seeking should not be confused with love seeking. If a child grows up to feel that he cannot think or act without first securing permission from a parent, then the neurotic seeds of self-doubt are early planted. I see how parenting has changed over the years, and I think this new way of raising children which with very few boundaries giving them whatever they want, has thrown this in the opposite direction. 
It seems to me that children get more opportunities to express themselves today than ever in how they dress, wear their hair, their language, their behavior, etc. But as approval seeking, just switch from what your family thinks of you to what strangers think of you. Do kids express themselves in a certain way so that they'll fit in? That has always been the case, but I think it's on steroids today because of social media. Everyone wants to be popular and will even bend their morality to fit in. Children need guidance to become the best that they can be. However, once they're grown, they have to make their own decisions, and here's what concerns me. If you make all of your choices and decisions in life to get approval from others, even people you don't know, where will you end up as a person? Will you have a life that is yours, or are you living a fake life? That's right. Here's a great great quote from Wayne Dyer about adults. Using yourself as a guide and not needing the approval of an outside force is the most religious experience you can have. It is a veritable religion of the self in which an individual determines his own behavior based upon his own conscience and the laws of his culture that work for him rather than become someone, um, rather, sorry, than because someone has dictated how he should behave. A careful look at Jesus Christ will reveal an extremely self-actualized person, an individual who preaches self-reliance and was not afraid to incur disapproval. What a great model. It is. And you know, Sherry, the government is another example of an institution that uses approval seeking as a motivator for conformity. Don't trust yourself. You haven't got the skills or the wherewithal to function alone. We'll take care of you. We'll withhold your taxes because you could spend them before the tax bill came due. We'll force you to join Social Security because you wouldn't be able to decide for yourself or save for yourself. You don't think uh, you don't have to think for yourself. We will regulate your life for you. Does this ring a bell? We are living this now more than ever, and the title of this chapter again is, When Approval Seeking is a Need, the Possibilities for Truth are All But Wiped Away. Now, Sherry, uh, I'd like to jump in here and say, you're listening to Randy and Sherry Goss, and we're with Rosenberg Financial Group. We are financial planners based in Macon and Warner Robins, and if you would like to come in and talk about your future financial plans or your current financial plans, um, come see us. Uh, Call us at 478 922 Eight one zero zero, and I'd like you to also visit our website, and it's www.retirerelax.com, and there's tons of free material on there for you, special reports and such. Uh, so please take advantage of that information and uh, give us a call at four seven eight nine two two eight one zero zero. All right, let's move on. So chapter number five: Have you stopped growing? At this point, I must ask: Have you stopped growing? Stopped learning? Have you forgotten the thrill of having a breakthrough? The, oh my gosh, this is not so bad or so difficult point. Wayne Dyer says it is unfortunate, but many people get to this stage in life and are content with their physical, mental, emotional, and yes, even their financial state of life. You know, Sherry, I still love that, oh my gosh moment. Mm -hmm. When I try something new and and it's a breakthrough, like the playing the guitar. I'm getting there. Not there yet, but we're getting there. You know, when I retired from the military, it was because of a serious illness. I had zero energy, and every day took a lot just to get up, get dressed, and out the door. Not to mention trying to do the things I needed to do to achieve what was on my to-do list for that day. Yes, I was more successful some days than others because of the physical issues I was enduring. I did not hit the high notes most days. There were plenty of days that a nap seemed to be the answer, but I knew that I had to remain physically and mentally active to move forward. During this time, I studied the Series 7 and 66 Securities Licensure material and tested for these licenses and passed both of the courses. Was it easy? No. Was it rewarding? Yes. You know, life is like that. Some days it rains and some days it's sunny. Our, our response is what matters. We all have a world of information at our fingertips, whether it's a computer, a smartphone, or the library. We can research and learn at a pace that we've never been able to do since man first stepped on this earth. So, take advantage of it. And when it comes to your debt, your income, your taxes, your retirement accounts, I encourage you to learn something new every month. You can do this. Then pay it forward by sharing the information you learned with someone who needs it. This could be your children, parents, neighbors, friends. Once you get smart on a subject, share it with your kids and your grandkids. Or ask them to teach you something new. They will probably surprise you. I bet they will. Mm Mm-hmm. There are lots of ways to grow. Reading, watching educational programming, learning to play an instrument, 
taking a painting class, or even going back to college for free. Expand your horizons. In Georgia, residents 62 and older can sign up for courses at any of the 31 colleges and universities in the state system and attend without paying tuition, although some nominal fees may apply. That's fantastic. The benefit is one that few senior citizens know about. I don't know how 62 makes you a senior citizen. I think we need to change that word. (laughs) That's because you're approaching it. (laughs) Yeah, I'm too close to it. Since it isn't widely marketed, but most institutions will have information about the program on their websites. If you'd like to take a painting class or a pottery class, you need to check out the 567 Center, sorry, 567 Center on 1st Street in downtown Macon. Easy for you to say. It's a great place. Yeah, we have done both the painting and the clay classes, and they were really fun. You don't have to be good at these things already, and it's fun, and it's also extremely relaxing. If that terrifies you, go to Hobby Lobby and look at all the things you can learn to do and check out the classes they offer. I have a lot of clients who sew, paint, knit, crochet, make quilts, etc. as it is fun and relaxing for them. And a lot of them then turn around and donate these items to charities or hospitals, and that makes them feel good. So what can you do to keep growing? How can you stretch your brain? I like it. So, Sherry, let's talk about the I statements or the I'm statement. I'm blank, so I'll never be good with money. I'm not smart, so I can't save money. Here's a quote from Wayne Dyer's book. If you believe that feeling bad or worrying long enough will change your past or your future events, then you're residing on another planet with a different reality system. Sherry, I have a friend, and you know him. Um, this is my closest friend from high school. He's a very smart guy. Uh, he's had a great career, and the closer he gets to retirement, um, the more he becomes to believe that he will never be able to retire. He's convinced himself that he could not possibly understand his own money. If you ask him about his bass boat, his truck, his camper, or the complicated nuances and regulations at the major shipping company where he works and is the head of security, he can tell you everything he knows to the nth boring detail with accuracy. Now, ask him about his money, and he immediately says that he sucks at money, which is why I am always broke. He's been saying that for 40 years, and I guess that he's just one major hospital copay from experiencing his own mantra. Can he change? Yes. Will he? Probably not, because he cannot stop himself long enough to do a little research and apply what he has learned to his own life and to secure the retirement that he wants. He is stuck in the I am's. I am not good with money. Uh, Wayne Dyer suggests all the all defeating I am's are the result of the use of neurotic beliefs like the following. That's me. I've always been that way. I can't help it. That's my nature. Am I exempt from this? No. I believe that we all have moments of pause in our lives that allow, uh, that slow our, our forward momentum. This could be the result of the job you're in, juggling child duties, and how saturated you are with the normal to-dos of life. We get that. Situations that stall your forward momentum uh, towards your goals are like anchors on your life, and the debt and the financially poor, cho- poor choices you've made won't help. Heck, debt and poor financial choices could be the main anchors that prevent the forward momentum that have, that have control, and you have control over that. You know, being overcome by daily chores is one thing, but wallowing in the past and using self-defeating phrases that start with I can really hold you back. A few phrases that describe what I'm talking about are, I am bad with math. I am bad with finances. I'm a spendaholic and I can't stop. Ouch, those are double I's. You're right. Um, I can't balance my checkbook. I've never had enough money. I can't change. The reward for hanging on to your past by using these statements can be neatly summed up in one word avoidance whatever you whenever you want to dodge a certain kind of activity or gloss over a personality defect personality defect you pull out the old i statements for justification many people have just used i negators for so many years that they have convinced themselves that they are not good at something and they're hesitant to try it's amazing how many people negate themselves because they find something a little difficult or out of the ordinary tract of their life if you own your own business or you want to become a business owner, you really need to understand money and the nuances of of, uh, business ownership. Now, this applies to your own home as well. You must become proactive in your financial affairs. Do not rely on others to give you all the information that you need. We often receive calls from people who want information on Social Security, Medicare, retirement, 
etc. And that's okay because we love to share what we know and help people. That's the cornerstone of our business. However, most everything we are able to convey to callers can be quickly located on the Internet. Of course, we do have life experiences of our own which helps us understand the data a little more than most. Now, many times people want to hear the information from an expert. We get that too. And that is understandable. And we appreciate your trust. This could be a great turning point for you, though. Take time to look up the answer yourself and then make the call to a trusted expert. The difference in the conversation will be profound. Instead of just taking notes, you can actually interact in the conversation in lieu of just being a listener. You may even be able to identify other issues that you had not previously thought of and come away with a better understanding of the situation you inquired about. Very good. And sometimes the IMs are real and out of our control. I'm exhausted because I work full time, take care of my grandkids, have an aging parent that needs my help. There are situations you get in and you just have to get through it. We've all been yep. there, done that. Absolutely. And we're, we're probably going to have more going forward. We're not talking about situations that are beyond your control. We're talking about beliefs that stall your forward momentum like an anchor on your life. And debt and financially poor choices could be the anchors that prevent forward momentum. Being overcome by daily chores is one thing, but using the IMs as excuses for not moving forward in your life are just that, an excuse. There could be old IMs issues where you have just convinced yourself that you are not good at something and are hesitant to try. Or maybe you weren't good at something in the past, so you don't think you can do it going forward. Our son is a great example of this. I love this story. In high school, he literally could not read the literature books that were assigned to him in his English class. A kid, both of our kids and Randy are ADHD. Their, their brains operate different than mine, so I had a hard time relating to this. But he literally couldn't focus on the pages as the writing was not interesting to him. So I had to go buy him cliff notes so he could even pass. Yep. Recently, we went to visit him and his family, and there were five big hardback books on his counter. One was about Warren Buffett's life and career. The others were financial books about stock and options trading. I asked him what was going on, and he said he had downloaded an app on his phone and was making money placing small trades, and it was really exciting and fun. So he wants to learn more about the stock market and thinks he could be a success with investing. I about fell over. Yeah, we both did. We had to, had to go look at the address on the front of the house. <laughs> the older we get, the closer to retirement we are. There is a point in life where compound interest may not be enough. So if your I am is, I'm not good with money, and I'm not good at investing, and I'm not sure that I'm saving enough for retirement, please find a financial advisor that you can develop a trusted relationship with who can help you create retirement plan, a retirement plan that is specifically for you. And remember... We offer free consultations, so don't be afraid to call our office at 478-922-8100 and schedule an appointment to check out who we are and what we do. 